Welcome to another exciting episode in the award-winning M&M Theory Series. And today we're gonna to be talking about sampling. Now I'm out here at the Zumwalt Prairie Preserve in Northeastern Oregon. This is a spot managed by the Nature Conservancy and it is just an amazing place. It's one of the last large remnants of Hell's Canyon grasslands uh, left in the world. Uh, just a really special place. And uh, it's a nice place to talk about sampling because this is a large landscape and it's too big for us to go out and visit every spot on the ground, right? So we need to pick some locations here where we're gonna go out and take our measurements. And then we're going to use statistics to infer from those measurements to what's happening across the, the broader landscape. And to illustrate that, we're going to use M&Ms. And uh, we're gonna do a simple exercise where we draw some M&Ms and we look at estimating proportions of different colors. That seems maybe like a really trivial example, but it's the same principles and the same statistics that apply to how we derive estimates of health of rangelands from a sample. I've got a pack of M&Ms here. I'm gonna pour them in the cup. Oop, make sure I got all of them. There we go. Okay, so for the purposes of this exercise, we'll consider this cup of M&Ms, this package of M&Ms to be our population, and we're going to estimate the uh, proportion of blue M&Ms in the cup. Now we could pick any color, or we could estimate all the proportions, and maybe we'll do that in a, in a subsequent uh, video. But for now, we're just gonna look at proportion of blue M&Ms. And to do that, I'm gonna dip into the cup and pull out a sample, and I want 10 M&Ms in my sample. So there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, okay? And uh, so I've got three blue M&Ms in my sample out of a total of 10, so my proportion is 0.3. Now I'm gonna put these M&Ms back in there. This is called sampling with replacement. Okay, and then I'm gonna stir them around a little bit and I'm gonna pick out 10 more. So there's what, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, this time I only got two blue M&Ms in my sample. Um, and I'm gonna repeat this. I'm gonna do this a couple more times and then we'll uh, calculate an estimate from that. And then we'll uh, uh, do the whole exercise again, but instead of uh, five samples, which is what I'm gonna do the first time, we're gonna do it with 10 samples, and then we're gonna do it with 20 samples, and we're gonna look at how the change in the sample size affects the estimate that we get. So I'll go ahead and do this offline, and then we can, uh, we can calculate the indicators together and look at the data. Okay, so for my first set of five draws of M&Ms, then if, if I laid them all out and, and didn't do the replacement, this is what it would look like. So I had one time when I drew in, the first time we had three M&Ms, the, the second time I did it, I only got two M&Ms. The third time there was only one out of 10. The fourth time there were three, and the fifth time I had four of them, okay? And so these are my samples, and each time I draw into the, the cup and pull out a set of M&Ms, that is a sample. So my sample unit is a group of 10 M&Ms. Now, I have individual M&Ms here, and I count each one, and so each M&M is my observation unit. So that's, a, that's an important distinction. We'll cover that more in the, in the course module. So the observation unit is the M&M, the, the draw, the, the set that I pull out of the cup is my sample. I've entered all of the data into Excel for our sample draws. So here's the number of the sample draw in the first column. And here's the number of blue M&Ms that we got in each sample draw in the, in the second column. And uh, for each time we drew it, we got 10 M&Ms. And then the first thing I need to do is calculate the proportion of blue M&Ms in each draw. And that's just really easy uh, formula. I'm just gonna do the number of blue M&Ms divided by the total number that was in each draw. So it's 0.3 for the first one. And then I'm just gonna copy that formula all the way down through all 20 draws. Now, if you're unsure of your 
uh, expertise or your skills with Excel. If if you're a little shaky there, I do have a video on like a crash course on Excel. It's basically everything that you need to know how to do to succeed in the RIM 410 520 class. So if this is uh, anything we do here in this video is getting a little uh, weird for you in terms of, of how I'm doing the formulas or what they mean, I'd, I'd really suggest you go and take a look at that other video. So the next thing now that we have the proportion of blue M&Ms, the next thing I want to point out is that when I totaled up everything that was in the bag, counted out all the M&Ms, I had 24 blue M&Ms and there were 76 M&Ms that were not blue. There were other colors. So that's 100 M&Ms. I have no idea if like they just put 100 M&Ms in every bag um, or if that number varies. Uh, that would be an interesting little experiment. Go buy a bunch of bags of M&Ms and count them all. That sounds like a great thing for my nine-year-old to do. Uh, so the actual proportion of blue M&Ms in the bag is, is 0.24. And so what we want to do now is calculate uh, our, or at, do our estimates of uh, sample means based on the, the number, different numbers of samples that we took and, uh, and see how close we get to that, that 0.24. So the first one was for five, a sample of five. And so um, I'm just going to do an an average here of the first five there we go and you can see that our sample mean there is 0.26 so it's not too far off the other thing that we want to do for each one of these is to look at the sample standard error and the standard error is just an estimate of the variability of the samples we'll have another video that goes into more detail about what these uh, variance or standard error and confidence interval statistics mean. But for now, just keep in mind that, that this is just a, uh, an estimate of how variable our samples were. And the formula for this is really pretty straightforward, though it's going to look a little hairy when I type it out. So we need the square root of our sample proportion times 1 minus that proportion divided by our sample size. Okay, So there's our sample standard error of 0.196, roughly 0.196. I can uh, get rid of some of those extra digits there that'll help make that a little bit easier to see. Okay, so there's our, our uh, sample mean for a uh, sample size of five. Now let's go ahead and do that uh, again. Uh, for the first 10. There we go. And I'll do it for all of them, all 20 of them. Okay. So this is really interesting. So my sample means are actually starting to converge onto the actual population value of 0.24 the more samples that I get. Um, and then this guy, I can actually just copy him down for the rest of it. And we can look at how the variability in those samples changes um, with sample size. So at a, at a small sample size of 5, my sample standard error was, was 0.196. And that's going to translate into quite a large confidence interval. And really, in short, what that confidence interval means is that... Um, the actual value is, we estimate it to be 0.26 based off the samples that we did, but then it could vary quite, the, the actual value could be somewhere within a much larger range um, around that 0.26. Okay, so as I increase in uh, my sample size, my sample standard error goes down, and so I'm more confident in my estimate. And so there's a, a, a greater precision to the estimate and the mean itself is starting to converge on the actual population value of, in this case, 0.24. So a couple of things we looked at in this example. One is the just the concept of sampling and, uh, and taking random draws from a population. We looked at the difference between a, a sample unit and an observational unit. 
and then we uh, calculated a, uh, an estimate of a statistic, in this case a, a sample mean, and we looked at the uh, variability of those samples in the standard error, and then we looked at how the precision of the estimates improves as we increase our sample size. So this is uh, basic M&M theory of sampling. Thank you.